Guitar practice session 103124. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on, then give you a recap so you get an idea of what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap, hoping the practice ses sessions generate a routine, help me to verbalize what I'm trying to learn to get it in my mind better, possibly provide information to others learning similar things, possibly also providing for feedback if anybody sees a better way to do the things that I'm trying to be doing here, I do think that presenting the information, even if nobody's listening, is useful because it helps us to kind of orientate our thoughts and be able to verbalize things in a way we would otherwise not be able uh, to do. So if you want to take this material, make your own practice session videos or whatever you want to do with it, that's okay. We'll try to provide the worksheets to you and don't worry about plagiarism or whatever. You can do what you want with them. They are structured from the standpoint of playing the guitar from behind the guitar such that if we took the guitar and imprinted the strings on the page, we would have the low or heavy string on top, top to bottom, left to right, same orientation as we see from behind the guitar. And I will flip my guitar around on the screen so it looks like I am left-handed to try to make it as easy as possible to line up what I'm doing to what is on the worksheet to what you're doing with your guitar from behind it so we don't have to keep on spinning the guitar around as we focus in on what we're looking at from the fretboard perspective. So when we start here, we're going to be looking at the minor scale once again. We're going to be looking at, we also call that the mode number six or Aeolian mode. So I start out uh, just describing the process. We're looking at the fifth and we're going to try to basically uh, figure out if I was at any note on the guitar, I would like to be able to know every fifth that is available to me and then be able to add also the third as well. We're looking here at the minor third. You can also compare and contrast in your mind the major third to build basically our triads. So I talk a bit about that and then I talk about the idea uh, that this is of course inherently useful to do because the fifth is gonna be so important to chord creation. It's the same interval on the majors and uh, the minors. So that's gonna be inherently useful. But I also want to go over the overall arching project to have that in the back of my mind so that hopefully it'll help me to kind of visualize things from that perspective as well. So then we jump over to the relative modes worksheet to recap the idea that I'd like to learn the major scale, use it as our Rosetta Stone to compare all other scales to it. The major scale, that's the minor scale, the major scale being the Ionian mode. And then the other uh, main scale is the minor scale, which is also the Aeolian mode. So it's the sixth mode of the major scale. So I can look at it motoli, but I also just recap the idea of how best to learn all these modes and why it's important in part because it helps us to know if we're going to build a major or minor chord in each of the different modes rather than just in the major mode. And it helps us to build chords beyond that, uh, adding uh, the 7, 9, 11, and 13, not just kind of willy-nilly adding them, but knowing that when I add those, I'm adding a note that is in the, the, the key or is not in the key, whatever the case uh, may be. And the strategy for doing that typically would say, I'm going to learn all the intervals for the, for the Ionian mode and then the related uh, modes to it, which is going to be the Lydian and the Mixolydian. And then we talk about the Aeolian. That's what we're on now and learn the modes that are closest to it, the Dorian and the Phrygian. And I talk a little bit about the idea I was going over yesterday, this idea that the uh, the Aeolian mode isn't actually the most minor mode. You would think the mode that is opposite to the major mode would be the Phrygian. And so I kind of made an argument that you would think that the Phrygian might be the one, like if you were just trying to pick the mode that's going to be the opposite and then compare the other modes to it. Yesterday I was going over the idea that I would think it would be the Phrygian because it would have the minor second in it. But there, uh, today I go into an argument of, of defending the minor scale on the Aeolian. And by the way, why do I get into these kind of things? It helps me to memorize things. And I think it just makes it more interesting. So you can think about why did it get constructed this way? Does it make sense that it was built this way? Or how did that come about? That kind of story, I think it is interesting. So then I go into that a little bit on my thought process on the Aeolian. 
and then we jump back on over to the minor modes and we look at our fifth here and we compare everything out uh, for the bottom three strings, the ones closest to the floor because we did the top three strings yesterday. I tell a, a joke that's political because it's political season these days. So, so that's, uh, that's in keeping with the times right now. And then at the end, I play in the key of A minor, a progression that's kind of a Spanish-y progression that I like to kind of throw in there. It's kind of funny because it's like the same progression that I would usually do with like a minor, like blues, really. well, not the same progression, but it's, you know, it's an A minor. It's not like there's nothing really, you would think like Spanish-y about the progression, but for some reason it kind of sounds Spanish-y. And since it's in the key that I play a lot in, which is A minor, it's kind of interesting to kind of try to go back and forth maybe from like what you might do on like a minor blues kind of thing and then go back and forth to the Spanish-y kind of thing uh, because it's in like the same key. And then and then I also have been experimenting with going from a major blues, like an A major blues to an A minor blues to the Spanish-y kind of progression type of thing. And as we do that, I kind of look at the progression in relation to relative positions from the perspective of a minor scale, as well as the the relative positions from the perspective of the major scale, which is also the numbering system that I'm using for the modes, the made the modes I can, you know, list it out by the modal chords, basically, uh, which is basically the major scale. Okay, so that's it. That's what I do. Today, we're continuing on looking at the minor scale, otherwise known as mode number six, the Aeolian mode, focusing in on the fifth interval of the minor scale or Aeolian mode, mode number six. But this time, looking at the bottom three strings on the guitar, the ones closest to the floor, because I believe we did the top three strings last time, remembering that the fifth interval is going to be inherently useful. So it's not like we're getting too far into the weeds and we're saying, how does this relate to music in general? Because of course, the one, three, five are the intervals that we use to build both the major and minor triads, the triads being the foundation of our chord construction. And the five will be the same relationship between the one and the five. That's the relationship we're looking at, whether we have a major chord construction or a minor chord construction, it's the third that will be different. So as we look at the fifth, then we'll take a look at the third and kind of add that into the mix a bit to the point that we can. As we do that, you might want to be keeping in the back of your mind, what would be the major third? What would be the difference if I was building like a triad with a major third and then kind of be able to shift that third back and forth to build the minor scales and the major scales as uh, we go through this. So that means that looking at the fifth relationship shouldn't be something that's too far in the weeds and we can't see application from it. But I also want to take a step back and look at the overarching picture to have that kind of in the back of my mind to reiterate kind of my long term objective basically every every day and, and refine it down as I'm basically doing that. So to do that, let's go back to the related modes. We've got the major scale and then the, the related modes uh, to it underneath our project. I'd like to be able to play basically in the major scale and in all of the related modes and be able to recognize relative positions in all the related modes and be able to build chords off of any note in not only the major and minor scale, but all other modes as well. So how can I, what's the easiest way to do that to kind of get to that point? Well, we usually in Western music use the major scale as our focal point. That's our point of reference. That's what we're going to refer everything back to. So we want to memorize everything there first, even though, although I think of it as a scale, not just simply a mode, possibly, I kind of level up the scale as being more important, maybe a higher important sounding word than a mode but it is still just a mode. It's the Ionian mode, only one mode of the others. And when you look at the relationships of the modes, there's nothing really special about it as you would think, like you can relate it to physics where they're saying there's nothing special about the relationship of the sun, right? Versus other stars or versus the planet, this planet versus that planet. They're, they're all, there's no special place that you can measure from. You just happen to pick a point and measure from that point and that's where the problems come in, the complexity comes in, the infinite 
possibilities and interest comes in because if you just look at things from a slightly different angle, everything changes relative to that slightly different angle, even though it doesn't seem like there's that many components that we're kind of looking at, right? Which is kind of amazing. There's actually infinite things we're looking at because you just, everything's kind of mixed, turns over on itself. So here, so how can I do that? I can say that we have the one through seven. That's the seven notes out of 12 in relative position. I'm looking here at the key of C, which is usually what we do when we look at it, things conceptually because there's no sharps and flats, but I'm not focused on memorizing the notes. I'm focused on memorizing the relative positions so that I can move those shapes around in my, in my mind as we would in an Excel worksheet when copying and pasting something and picking up the relative uh, shapes. So then I want to be able to, once I name them, I want to be able to build chords off of whatever the note is, whatever relative position I'm in within the scale. I usually memorize that we have the one, four, five major chords, the two, three, and six minor chords. You can go through an exercise as to why that is. It's only because we're just starting from a different point, relative positions, and taking every other note in the scale, and that's what, happened to, that's what happens to happen. So that means that all of these chord constructions are really just scales, but they are written in every other note, taking every other note. So it's just a scale that we're looking at now, which is a, a modal scale, a different mode, a different organization, a different starting point of the same uh, notes. So, so, then, so that's great. I can kind of uh, memorize that. But then when I go to the Dorian or the Phrygian or whatever, I have a problem because now the relative positions have changed. The notes are the same, but the relative position is different. How can I figure out what chords I should make from every note in a relative position in a Phrygian mode? One way to do that is to compare it to the major mode and say, well, the Phrygian is the third mode. That's an absolute numbering system that maybe not everybody uses, but I think it's useful because I can say, look, if I'm looking at the major scale, the Phrygian is the third, I'm gonna call it mode number three, Phrygian, and that will allow me to use the major scale as a reference point. I know that if it's the third mode and I started on the major scale and counted down, it would be two steps down. So that I can take a formula and say three minus two would be, uh, three minus one would be two, it'd be two steps down. So if I'm in the Phrygian mode, mode number three minus one is two, plus whatever the relative position I'm in, such as plus three here, that gives me mode number five, or the relative position five in comparison to the major scale, which I know the one, four, five are major chord constructions. Therefore, I know that on the third of the Phrygian, I would be playing a major chord construction off of that third note. So that's gonna be useful. Beyond that though, I'd like to know the seven, nine, 11, and 13 notes as well that don't follow as nice a pattern as having the thirds do, meaning it's not like all the majors are gonna be the same and all the minors are gonna be the same. So that adds another level uh, of complexity. How can I memorize those? Easiest ways to group the major modes here, the one, the four, five, in terms of absolute mode numbers, which are the relative positions in the major scale, group those together, first memorizing the Aeolian or the Ionian, which we did before, the major scale, looking at all the intervals, the seven, nine, 11, and 13, those are the ones being different. The one, three, five will be the same. And then look at the related modes and look at the different interval so that you know that if you're in the Lydian, all of the chord construction intervals will be the same. When I go to that chord, all of the notes, if I go beyond the one, three, five, will be the same as the Ionian, the major scale, except the 11, which is equivalent to the two, which we'll talk more about uh, later. And then the Mixolydian, the probably the most important difference on the five, mode number five, which I can call a Mixolydian related chord construction, will have the same relative one, three, five, but will have a seven that's different. And that's really important because that's that dominant uh, seven situation. And then we go to the minor. So the minor mode is here, the Aeolian, remembering that the Aeolian is just another mode. It's a minor scale, but it's just another mode, just like the Ionian is another mode. If you looked at it from the perspective of the major scale, we could just play the, the Aeolian as the sixth, 
and make everything work around it. But obviously, it's so important, a mode, that we usually reorganize it as the one, right? So it's going to be the one, and we'll take a look at the uh, Aeolian, but it's the sixth of uh, the major scale. So if I scroll down to it, then here's the Aeolian mode. It's the minor mode, the main minor mode. So I could compare this to the major intervals and it, and that'll be the easiest thing to do. And I almost have to just memorize these intervals now because the minor is so important. So the major intervals. So, so on the major intervals, I had a perfect first, a major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major six, major seven. Now, the thing that's interesting on the minor is you would think that the perfects would remain the same on those relative positions and all the majors would change to minors represented by a little m. But that doesn't happen for the second on the, on the main minor, which is the Aeolian mode, which is interesting because I was looking at it yesterday and I, I was, came to the conclusion, I was thinking, hey, you know what? The mode that does do that is the Phrygian mode. So you would think, again, you would think that uh, if you said the, 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 the major scale is the Ionian, you would pick the Phrygian mode as the opposite because it has all of the majors changing to the minors and all the perfects are the same, which is what you would expect. Now, again, I, I think you don't do that because uh, people just liked playing in the Aeolian and so it became the main minor. That's my guess. But you can also make an argument that if you were to memorize it, just to just to kind of drill these different ideas home, because it might help us to memorize the intervals. You, you, so so the, my thought would be, hey, look, the, the Phrygian is actually the main minor. That's the most minor that you can get. That's the opposite of the of the major scale, even though we use the, the Aeolian. But you could make an argument for the Aeolian because you could say, hey, look, if I'm trying to memorize this, I want to memorize the minor mode, which has a minor third, as all minor modes do. That's the definition of a minor mode. And uh, but I want to pick the one that is as similar as the other two minor modes, which happens to be the Aeolian, because if I pick the Aeolian and I memorize those intervals, even though it has this wacky second that isn't minored, uh, if I pick this one, I mean, the other argument you can make is like, well, the second should have been a per, well, I won't do that because then the six would have to be a perfect. But anyway, if we say that we memorize all of these, then the two, the two minor modes, the Dorian and the Phrygian actually only have one different interval than the main minor Aeolian. So that's kind of cool because that means that the major, when you compare the the major scale to the other two majors, there's only one interval difference. And when I compare the other two minor modes to the main minor, the Aeolian, there's only one interval difference. So that means when I memorize it, I can, I can say, okay, well, yeah, I just need to memorize the, the Aeolian, I mean, um, the, the major scale, Ionian, the minor scale, the Aeolian, and then I can compare the other major modes, Lydian and mixolydian to the major scale and there's only going to be one interval difference and i can pair, i can compare the two minor modes dorian and phrygian to the main minor scale aeolian and there's only going to be one interval difference so there's some kind of symmetry uh with that whereas if i put the phrygian if i made the phrygian my main minor and then i compared the aeolian and the dorian to it then you, the, Dor the, 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 the Dorian would actually have two intervals that would be different because it had a, has a major second and a major six, I believe. So it would be different. So you could make the argument that just from a memorization, I'm just trying to work this out in my mind. It might help us to kind of memorize it just to kind of come up with a logic as to why things might have happened or how things might be done differently. And you might say, why, are you, why would you do that? Because it is what it is. Just take in the just take in the information like it like a like a tape recorder or something. But that's not how the mind works. I don't think you have to make up a story that makes sense to you so that you could memorize the thing. And I think a story that makes sense to me will make sense to anyone because it's a good story and that stories are supposed to make sense. So this is what I and this is what I would imagine might have happened, which might not have ha actually happened. 
but still you can imagine it might have happened that way because it would make sense if it happened that way and then that helps me to memorize what is happening here see it's totally not a waste of time I'm not trying to in any case so that's the idea now so we could memorize the minor scale by just saying it's the opposite of the major comparing it to the major so instead of having a uh, it has a perfect first which is the same and then the minor second that's the one major i'm sorry major second that doesn't change so the second here is a two note away major second the third is now a three note away minor third instead of a four note away major third the fourth is still a five note away perfect fourth the fifth is still a seven note away perfect fifth the sixth is now instead of a nine note away major six an eight note away minor six and the seven is now instead of an 11 note away major seven a 10 note away minor seven all right and so that's going to be the so the other way i can memorize this because the minor scale is so important uh i don't want to have to keep referring back to the major scale so much with it so i could memorize and say hey look with the major scale i knew that to make a major chord was the one four five to make a major chord and then the two three and six were minor with the minor down here i still have the one four five so that's where that like bluesy thing in my mind the bluesy thing comes in here's the one four five so the one four five is still like the blues pattern both in the major blues and minor blues which i would call a one four five to me is like a blues progression even though you can play it and not make it sound like bluesy and obviously it's going to be in any genre and stuff too you don't have to make it twangy or anything <laughs> i'm just saying that's a good thing to practice and that's easy to memorize but the but the two three six doesn't work out you got to memorize that the two is the funny one that's the one we probably avoid a lot of the time it's the, we don't make a chord off it unless we want to lead into something but even if we did it would probably lead into the ionian but anyway that's going to be the two is the funny one and then you've got the the three six seven so you've got so if i just want to make a ma minor chords and major chords the one four five in the minors is are the minor chords and the three six seven are the majors but i want to know beyond that even i want to know the relative modal constructions which again i might just memorize because that will help me to build long you know build out the more complex chords so i have to memorize that the one is obviously the aeolian mode and then the four and the five are the phrygian are the dorian and the phrygian so it's the one is mode number five or mode number six sorry aeolian and then the four is what i would call mode number two absolute mode number two dorian and then the five is what i would call absolute mode number three the phrygian and then the three is going to be what i would call absolute mode number one ionian major scale and then the six is what i would call absolute mode number four lydian uh, a major mode and then the seven is what i would call absolute mode number uh five the mixolydian and then the two is that funny one on the minor with the uh locrian which has uh the d the diminished chord construction okay so that's going to be the idea all right let's go back on over i think i just babbled for way too long so let's get to the let's get to work man this, is, this isn't a jabber session you've got to do the work <laughs> do the work oh god okay here we go we're gonna go into let's go to the d down here all right let's do the work <laughs> actually no wait a second uh I want the D to be the root. Get your head in the game. Where's the D? Dude, where's the D? There it is. But I was gonna make that here. Why don't why did I why don't I do a C? The C would make more there it is. Did I do C last time? I don't think so. Alright, let's do the C. So we're focusing in on the fifth this time. That's where our focus is. We're on the C, bottom three strings. Remember the fault line is between these two strings. So this bottom bit, plate tectonics, have shifted it to the right because of the earthquake on the fretboard. There wasn't a real earthquake, but again, I'm making a story, you know, because it helps 
if there's a plate tectonic shifted to the right. Okay, but so we're right up top. We're right up top, sitting right on the San Andreas fault right there, just like I am here waiting to, I'm just waiting to die with the San Andreas fault. That earthquake's going to suck me up and then it'll be all over. The pain will cease. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's go above it first. So <clears throat> we're looking at a seven note away, perfect fifth. And so if I go above it, the distance between the two notes is going to be the inverse. I know the inverse of a seven note away perfect fifth is a five note away perfect fourth, but the math behind that would be 12 minus seven, which would be five, which is a perfect fourth. So if I go up here, I know that this distance from G to C is a, uh, a, a five note away perfect fourth. And then therefore from the bottom up seven note away perfect fourth fifth okay and so if i added I, what can i do with that i can add a third right here so now we've got an inverted uh an inverted c minor so there's the five uh three five one i don't i probably don't i don't have the terminology for like the proper inversion like is it a first inversion or a second inversion uh, I just know it's not, it doesn't have the, <laughs> I'm not, a, I'm not a music, I'm, I'm not an expert in that area. I didn't play like the piano or learn my inversions uh, properly, which I've, it's on my, it's on my to-do list, but on the guitar, it's like, I'm just like, I'm just trying to find, <laughs> I'm just trying to find the three notes and grab them in different ways to get a different voicing uh, from it uh, is my, so I know it's inverted in some way and you could tell me. <laughs> what the proper term is, which I do appreciate, and I would like to learn that, uh, but I, d I don't currently know that. All right, and so then I could go down here, say there's a third down here. Uh... So that's like my A shape, shape, right? Uh, so that makes sense. Now, like an A minor shape. Now, uh, note that if I look at this third, by the way, uh, if it was a major, it would be moved up. So it's a flattened third, this one too. This would be flattened if it was a major shape. And I'm looking at the, the minor shape here. I was trying to get that in my mind. And then here's the full bar chord uh, for this one to here. So I'm looking at the bottom. Of, so that would be like I'd be grabbing this C and then barring this off. Boom, 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 boom. And then, of course, I've got this one down here, which I'm barring this way. Or I could just grab it this way. Just to add that into the mix, man. All right. And then if I was to lean forward on this, I've got an arpeggiation I can do like this. So this would be five, one, three, one, three, five, one, three, five. Let's move on. So moving on, moving on up to this one. So same relationship we have here. Like when I was on the, I think we did the G last time and all the relationships would be the same, ex right? Because if I was on the G, then you could see from here to here. If I was on here, it would be here to here. And then, and then, but when I, but then I have another string that's been revealed right? Because I moved it down this way. So now I have another opportunity up top. So this shape should be the same relative position as when I was on the D, which was up here, uh, the G, which was up here on the D. Okay, so if I count that out, it's going to be negative five, I'm calling it negative when I go up 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, which makes sense because I'm looking for a seven note away perfect fifth, which means that the inverse is a five note away perfect fourth. So if I was to go from this C, to this, uh, wait a sec, wrong way. <laughs> You're going the wrong way, dude. I'm gonna go this way. I do that a lot. I go the 
wrong way. I like to walk in circles. So that's going to be, I'm just doing laps. Exercise, man. Okay. I'm just doing it for the exercise. That's going to be a five note away perfect fourth from the bottom to the top, seven note away perfect fifth. And so I could try to bar this. No, that doesn't. And then I would get a two fifths. That doesn't really help me much. There's not much else I can do with that. I'm going to leave it as is. Now we've revealed a new string up top. So now I have a new string. So that's going to be 5, 10, 15. Let's bring that down. 15 minus 12 is 5 minus 2, which is 3. And then four, five. So it's five notes away, if I think of it as a circle. So from here to here, is that right? Awfully heavy. So that's going to be a five note away perfect fourth, so therefore the inverse is a seven note away perfect fifth. All right. So then I have, what else could I do with that? I've got a third back here. Kind of a stretch. The third is on the D. I don't do that much. Hmm. It's doable. To play with that later. Uh, what else do I have available? I've got a third down here that's under the fault line, so it looks like it's a major third, but it's a minor third because we have now crossed the plate tectonic tectonic plate. So now we have this. So I'm just muting these strings with my pointer finger. I could play them, which would add another root, and then the F is an 11. So I could just bar this like this. This is interesting. And then of course, I could go into my standard, I'm just right on my standard uh, A minor shape like this. Duh. Probably should have pointed that out at the beginning. All right. What else? What else? I have a, the bottom of the shape is useful to see as well. Lean back. But now I'm looking at the third. Now I got mixed up again. I'm not looking at that though. I was looking at this one. I'm focused on this note. Okay, I should use a different color. No, I can figure it out. I'm gonna say, let's go on the same string now. This is the one where we go up seven notes. So if I reach up seven notes, there's gonna be one, two, three, four, one, two, th and this one. So there's like five notes that I can play that's in the scale, including the one I'm starting on. So again, I've been trying to think about that I just keep on wanting to point this out because if there was, if I only went up three, it would be, if I went up, if I went up four, I would try to finger it so I can use all four fingers. So it'd be like, and then if I went up five, I have a choice of shifting this back or shifting my pinky. So I could go. Right, and shift my pinky. Or I can shift my pointer. It's probably easier. Edelmosa. So I don't know if that's the best fingering technique. I think it, I've just been 
tinkering with it. I'm, again, I'm not an expert on the different fingering uh, because I've been really just trying to play in one shape, but that makes sense to me. If there's anyone who says, hey, you're doing it wrong, you're doing it stupidly, you might be right, but that's like, that's the way I do it right now. And maybe I'll fix it if you tell me I'm doing it stupidly. All right. So then if now we've crossed the fault line, so we're looking seven notes away. So that means up here, it's five notes, six, seven. So that's like my power chord. All right. Move B to the N. I can arpeggiate that. I have a third here. So now I've got the one, three, five, one, three, five, one, three, five, one, three, five, five, one, three, five. I've got a third back here. A little bit easier to arpeggiate because normally that third would be back here. But now because of the kink and the tuning, it's right there. So it looks like a major third arpeggiating. So, one, three, five, one, whoa, one, three, one, three, five, one, three, five, one, three, five, one, one, three, five. Still a little hard to reach out. Okay. All right, I see that. And then I could stretch all the way up here to a third, which I don't see, I don't think people do that much. So it could be a pre impressive if you were like, oh, you want me to play a C minor? Let me just do that. It's a little more stretchy down here because again, the kink and the tuning. There's your C minor. <laughs> Why in the world would you do that? You're gonna, you're gonna pull a muscle in your finger. No way, dude. I've stretched. I've done my warm-up exercises. I know what I'm doing. Okay. So then I could go up here. And so this is going to be here and then here. That's actually doable. I try to mute this, these two strings. Could mute. And I should do that more. That's totally doable. How would I think about that? Obviously, if this is a I'm on the five, interesting. Because then I can, it's kind of an interesting shape, because I've got the three. I've been noodling around with that and over here it makes more sense to me because I've been doing that in the key of D. Okay, that's why that's looking so familiar. Uh, let's see, what else, do I have anything else I can 
do I can reach way out here no you can't I could if I wanted to I could do that no no it's not doable what are you crazy are you crazy okay maybe I was a little crazy let's try it going down here it's worth looking at. All right, so here's the one that crosses the fault line. So like when I was up on the A, I had my fifth over here, which if I lay the third down, a minor, that would be an A minor. And when I was on the D, I had my fifth down here. If I lay the third down, that would be a C minor shape, D minor. And then when I was down here on the G, the third shifted up, or, or the fifth shifted up. So I had this. So that's interesting. See how that, sh that shape changed? And then now I'm here, and now the third has shifted up because now I'm on the kink of the tuning on the third, and the fifth is, follows suit. There's not, another, there's not another kink. The plate tectonic shift is now between these two. So both of these two have now moved up. And so this would be my like lean back shape. And of course that's part of the minor, A minor shape. So I can play like that, or I can play like this. All right. Mui B to the end, Mui B in. Hippies are just B in, man. But why just be in when you can mooey be in? That's uh, probably not. Oh, I have this stretchy bit right here. Look at that. Don't do that much. Be a boom, boom. And then like right there. It's kind of hard to mute. not the most useful I don't think right there at least for me all right okay so let's move on to like this E maybe let's move on to that E but first I have a political oh wait a sec I have a joke and it's got political stuff in it so if you want to move forward fast forward that's okay because we're in we're in the season Halloween has passed. All we have are politics now, so we have to be in the season. So here's practice session. Get some coffee here. I should really do more rehearses before I do this. So anyway, checks and balances. The Harris campaign thinks that checks and balances, you know, the, our governmental system has the checks and the balances that we all learn about. Well, the Harris campaign it thinks that the checks and balances is, is about writing checks with taxpayer dollars to tip the balance of political scales in their favor, right? I mean, it's like I, I, these deconstructivists, man, they like redefine everything. I'm telling if, if the dang Supreme Court is in your way, they say, attempting to uphold, uh, you know, the Constitution universal self-evident god-given rights for crying out loud clearly what you need to do is you need to write a few more checks to a few more justices stacking the court and tipping the balance in your favor the political balance that is that's how the checks and balances works they say and it's like i don't think that's i don't think that's the founder's intention you got to do that until the supreme court becomes more political they're, they're going to make the Supreme Court more political than the politician Swalwell on a date with like Fang Fang, right? 
They want to make the court. They want to make the Supreme Court more political than a drug-addled Hunter Biden working at a foreign energy company for crying out. They they'd like to make the Supreme Court more political than the mainstream of sewage media opening their mouth. It's crazy. Like they look. They'd like to make the Supreme Court more political even than the mainstream of sewage media colluding with the government and social media to shut your mouth. That's some, that's some crazy political stuff, man. That's some super dirty political. You know, it's, it's almost as dirty and political as the stuff on that one laptop that one time that everyone was forced to shut their mouth about. The last time around we had this, this whole season that happened last time. Well, I'll tell you what. The media should be should be a check against the ever increasing centralized power, not the receiver of a check from it. The Supreme Court is designed as a check against overreaching legislative and executive power, gradually strangling self-evident rights under the guise of compassion, not a political scale to be tipped by the political whims of the day. We need a check. We, we, we need a check on the radical redefining of terms in this country by the crazy deconstructive progressive people that keep redefining everything. I, for one, am getting a little a little tired of this. I'm getting a little freaking tired of this and vice versa. It's a long night last night, but that's not the point. That's not the point. Getting a little humping tired of this. Anyways. That's all I got. I should rehearse them more. I think I think I could tighten that rant up a bit. Anyways, I'm running out of material. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next one. I'm on the E now. Okay, so we're going to go above the fault. The fault line is right above it now. So if I go above it, then notice that the 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 fifth has been shifted. So if I'm on this E, so I'm going to say, all right, I'm looking for a distant, I'm looking for a, a seven note away perfect fifth, but I have to do the inverse, which I know is going to be 12 minus seven, which is a five note away perfect fourth. And the distance between these two notes, notes is now five notes away. Remember when I was up here on the C, I had a fifth right above it because I wasn't hitting the fault line. Here the San Andreas messed everything up. The fault line, that's the big fault where I live in California. So we're going to say there, and so that messed it up. So we have the fifth back here. So if I go to top to bottom, we have a, uh, a, a five note away perfect fourth, bottom to top, seven note away perfect fifth. Okay, what can we do with that? Well, we have a third up here. So I have this shape, which is a cool shape that I don't use as much as I should. I like it though. I'm trying to mix, put it in the mix more. And that, by the way, is kind of like a, from a caged system, you might say, what is that from a caged system? Because you could think of the caged system as like a, uh, like a C would be like this, and then you shift back uh, the third. So that would be a major, and then you, sh you shift back the third. Uh, so, so it actually, but you can't really play it like, so it'd be a minor C shape, but you'd have to reach up to that E, right? So no one really does that, so you kind of break it down this way. Uh, and then you have that and then you have the lean forward shape, which would be this so you can kind of think of this as the this the C minor caged shape that you play like this and then convert down to here play it this way so You can kind of play it in two different chunks And it's actually a full chord has all three notes in it both ways. So that's pretty cool. All right, so in any case uh, That's that and then I've got my D shape so whenever, by the way, my go-to shape there, I ha I've been forgetting my first idea of saying, well, what's my go-to shape? This would, if I saw this as my string, then the go-to shape is usually going to be thinking, what's a D, what's a minor shape? This one, that's probably my go-to shape. Uh, but I think this one is just as comfortable right there. So I think all of, I'm really liking all of those shapes so so this shape is also quite nice because this shape it's a little hard to mute the one above it it's just that if you play it this way 
the E is on the bottom. But anyway, that's that's a D from a from a cage perspective. That's a D uh, shape, and then I could ha do my arpeggiating thing. I could say, well, I'm on here. I could go. We've got the one, one three five, one three five, one three five. That's interesting. Muy interessante. Like the good old elephant. Okay, stop with the elephant. Er interessante like a elefante. <laughs> oh, so I have one. This is a three, five, one, and I can mute the one underneath it with my mute those. Maybe I should play this. So I don't do that much. It's kind of interesting. All right. I had an elephant with a stuffed elephant with big ears, but then the ears got all messed up, which is sad because, like, an elephant that doesn't have ears. Uh, it's almost as bad as not having the tusks, you know? That's like, so anyway. We're gonna say then, if I go to the bottom, the one right above it, so now the fault line, so now we're on the A here. The fault line is up here. The plate tectonic shift happened on the bottom two. So still have the same relationship between these two. So five notes away, or five note distance between these two, top to bottom, therefore, five note away, uh, 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 no, so five note away, yeah, perfect fourth, and bottom to top, therefore, inverse, seven note away, perfect fifth. And then, of course, this shape, what's my go-to shape here? I just throw that uh, C on top of it. So now you got this, it's inverted, but that's our A shape, which is, or our minor shape, which is cool, because I have like this shape here, it's actually the bottom of our full minor shape, the full bar chord, meaning it would be this, boom, 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 but I can just play that bottom bit and get that. So it's kind of neat to deconstruct that bar chord. You've got this at the bottom, you've got this in the middle. And then at the top, you got this. But up here, you have to get down, the problem is this top bit, you can't just play three notes, you gotta get down to the C, I, it, because that's the minor. So I have to go four notes down, which is the hard one to get, because that's right on the knuckle of my bar. So, I, But that's cool. Pivot, pivot around that one. Pivot around the bottom note. And all three ways to play the A, a minor which is neat o neat o o let's pick up a third up here so i have here so it'd be boom interesting it looks like an a shit it looks like a c shape but it's not cuz i looking at it from the standpoint of the A, I could do a C, an A shape C bar chord, but think of it as an A, which is a little confusing because now I threw in the G on top, which from the perspective of the A is a seventh. So if I, if I played that chord with that A on top, You'd say, oh, that's a C, that's an A-shaped C major. But you're like, no, it's, I'm thinking it's an inverted, an inverted A minor with a seventh in it. See how that gets messed up? Which you could imagine that would be a way that you'd want to say it in certain circumstances, possibly. But, <laughs> okay, let's not get into the weeds on that. <clears throat> Anyway, you also have one up here. Let's not do that. Let's just move on. I'm getting tired. I want to rock out. I want to do a little bit of 
So if I go up here, now we have crossed the fault line. The fault line has been crossed. So it's gonna be 10 up to here, and then uh, 15 to here, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. Uh, that makes no sense. Okay, Paso, uh, you went the wrong way. <laughs> I'm gonna say this is negative five, and then up here is negative 10, and then it goes down nine, eight, seven. Seven notes, no, it should be five notes away. What am I doing? I'm losing it, I'm losing it, man. It's gonna be five, and then 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Yeah, I was right, okay, okay. I'm gonna have to stop soon. This is, you're learning the wrong thing now. Now you're not even learning it right. Now you're going the wrong way. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. All right, that's almost doable now that we've crossed the fault line makes that maybe actually easier. Uh, and then I have this one above it. There's no way. Maybe. Maybe. And then maybe I can bar these two. That's doable. Don't do that much. Is that right? Yeah. No, this would be the three, five, five, one. That's interesting. Uh, I have this one down here. There's no way I'm gonna play that. All right, let's leave that alone. Let's go up to this one. So that would be five, 10, 15, let's bring it down, 15 minus 12, it's five minus two, which is three, plus five is eight. Okay, wait a sec, I messed up again. This would be five, 10, this way, 15, and then bring it down to 15 minus 12, it's five minus two, which is three, plus five, six, seven, eight, seven, six, five. So there's five note distance between this note and this note. <laughs> inverse therefore just seven that away and then I have of course these I can play like that leaning up to this one it's hard to bar that if I grab that G I might as well grab the G pulling in the seven that's doable. I should do that more. But that's just part of my... That's part of my A minor shape. So now I'm just playing these bottom three and then picking up this one. Alright, I see what's happening. I think I have to stop. Let me just jam around for a bit. I was thinking of playing the progression in minor that's like a Spanish-y sounding progression. Which is kind of a cool progression, which is basically a minor progression as far as, you know, it's a little tweaked, but so I was like, okay, let's take a look at that because that's fun. I like playing that. It's a, I, I, I think Spanish-y stuff around here, like in Mexico, I think at least they play a, a lot on the nylon string, which is a little like uh, less twangy sounding. And then, and then you get, and then you got the finger style so they can do that, like that stuff. I can't, obviously, I have no idea how to do that at all. And, uh, and I have a twangy <laughs> uh, steel string, so, not really Spanishy there, but and I and I have to use a pick, uh, so but but there's like a like the the whole thing where they like like doing this kind of thing. I hear a lot. In Spanish.
band. Doesn't work as well when it's a whole step. What do they call that? Legato? I don't know. I don't know my terms, but when it's a half step. Sometimes that can give you a Spanish kind of feel, as far as, I, as far as my ear says. So I can add that in. And for some reason, this progression, even though it's just like a normal, like A minor progression for the most part, it sounds span. It tends to have a Spanish kind of thing to it. It's just so if I looked at it from the perspective of the minor, it's going to be an A minor, and then it goes to uh, a G, which I can play this way or this way. Or G. I like going up here. It's a little bit easier. G, and so I noticed noticed that the that the G is the seventh of the minor scale which is equivalent to the fifth of the relative major, meaning it's the mixolydian mode. And then it goes to an F, which is, which is here. Play it like this, or this, or just this. F, which again is now the sixth of the uh, minor mode, but it would be the fourth, or it's, it's it would be the, the fourth of the related major, and then you've got, and then it goes to the E minor, or but it actually majors it, so it would go to an E, which is normally, which would be the fifth, because the one, four, five of the relative minor are the minors. So normally that would be a minor construction, but then they throw in, you gotta throw in a major, putting this finger down to get that major th uh, third. And why does that happen? That's quite common in the minors, as well as in the major. Anytime I'm going home to the Aeolian, notice that like when I look at the minor scale here, like if I play position one, I don't have a leading tone to go home. Whereas if I, if I played in, in A major, it would be like, it would be like, see how I have that leading tone? In the minor, I don't, I don't have it. I got. Whoops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Versus. Uh, versus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, 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 if I want to add that leading tone in the minor, I could just say, okay, I'm going to play something right before I go home, right before my A minor. I'm just going to play something. Lately, I've just been doing this. And just kind of sliding into it. That's kind of fun to do. But uh, the common way to do that is to say, well, I'm going to play the, the, the five, uh, the relative five, but instead of playing an E minor, I'm going to turn it into a major. So I could do it like that. And I like putting my finger down. So that's quite common in a 1-4-5 shuffle too. So if I was in like an A minor, then I can go to the D minor. I can go to the E minor. And when I go back home, I shift that minor to a major, shifting up the third. I like putting this finger down on this position. And that brings it back home. So that's what happens on this progression. So that's why I think of it in terms of A minor. So I got the, one A minor, the seven, which is going to be the G, the six, which is the F, and then the five, but I majored it. Now, if I look, I could look at that same progression from the perspective of the relative major, because I might know those better, and I could just say, well. What would so if I numbered the progression from the perspective of a minor, it would be the seven, I'm sorry, it would be the one, seven, six, five. One, seven, six, five, but then we major the five. From the perspective of the major, uh, it would be the six, because this is the sixth mode, and I'm numbering these by modals, right? So it, it would be the six, five, uh, four and three, six, 
five, four, three, right? So let's try. So if so, how can I make that Spanishy? So if I played this. a fun progression to kind of play with so sometimes you can kind of like do this kind of thing so you do, there's a little picking thing in there pattern that's common bar chord on the F and so once I get so once I get that pattern down I can kind of mess with it up here so here would be an A minor and th this is kind of interesting because when you play it up here you have this it just falls back because it's it's the the five four three and then to the so right so so here's the one, and then that falls back to this. You could play just these three notes for the G shape, and then that falls back to just the same shape to the F shape, and then that falls back to basically the same shape for the, the E shape, which you add this note, that's the note that's out of the key, that pulls it back because see it's right before the a so that's what leads into then the a shape so you uh you can play it pretty fast like that because you can just be like I try to then I try to mix that in with my blue, my minor blues because it's basically the same the same progression so you can make it sound
takes the minor blues and the major blues and then kind of and then I'm throw and then you throw in and then you throw in the Spanish sound. I'm thinking that should work cuz like the major blues has mixes between the minor so here's the major suspended chord gives you it's basically an E major and then and that kind of gives you that in between tension you don't need to do that but then I can go from that to the minor so A minor
that's it for now.